yeah, so for those of you who uh, have been following the Rakdos Sacrifice content, you know, I've been playing this deck a lot, been uh, winning a lot too, had some good uh, deep runs and challenges, and we are trying something a little bit different. So this is actually a donation deck list, surprisingly enough, because um, I would have probably ended up playing this version regardless, but we get to kind of kill two birds with one stone here. But this is the uh, the version that I think a lot more people are. It's, this one's this version's a lot more popular. So essentially, the uh, the major changes here are we're playing Blood Tithe Harvester over Voldaren Epicure, and we're playing with Fable over additional copies of Obnixilus. Those are the two major changes. A couple uh, you know small changes along the way, like trimming the fourth claim, trimming a second village rights. Um, you know, some small stuff along the way, adding the fourth push, so on and so forth, but more so those are like the two major changes that we're going to take a look in and see kind of how it plays out. Um, you know, my biggest cons my biggest concern is Harvester over Epicure. So it's, it's actually less so Fable over Ob, because I'm kind of realizing the more, the more I play these matchups out, the, I think the two most popular decks would, you can disagree with me here, would be Monogreen and Phoenix. And I think Obnixilus is actually kind of bad against both of them. Uh, the problem with Ob against Monogreen is if they Karn for Needle, they Needle both of your Obs, so that's like your entire game plan is just shut off by a single Karn. And Ob is normally one of the things that's actually like decent-ish against Karn. Um, so there's that. And then the problem with Obnixilus against Phoenix is if you plus Obnixilus, and they, like, they, they, if they have a Phoenix in hand that they don't have a way to discard, they can just discard Phoenix to the Obnix. So it's like... <laughs> I don't really know that Obnix is that good against the two most popular decks. So, for that reason, I don't mind trying Fable. I think I'm a little bit more concerned with Harvester over Epicure. You know, obviously, if you if you just put the cards side by side, I'm not Harvester's a more powerful card, but I'm just a little bit concerned with the curve. Uh, cutting ones for twos can, you know, make some double spell or potential triple spell turns a little bit more awkward. So, we'll see how that plays out. But yeah, everything else is pretty much the same. Sideboard changed up a little bit. Uh, we've moved the Obnixiluses to the sideboard because you do need to have them in your deck for blue-white control because that is your best card against blue-white, so that makes a lot of sense. Makes the disputes a little worse. Yeah, because you don't have, like, the op tokens to sack to dispute. But, like, ideally you're playing a one-drop into dispute, right? You're going to go, like, familiar or witness and then turn to dispute and then kind of curve, you know, just go up the curve that way. But yeah, if your plan is to like ob and have a token to sack the dispute, that can be a little bit more awkward because you don't want to. Well, that's not true though, right? Because Fable gives you a treasure. Oh, swapping Epicure for Harvester, right? Because you can't. Yeah, that's the other thing too is you can't curve Epicure into dispute. Yeah, yeah I gotcha. So that is definitely a downside as well because that's a very common line with Epicure is you just go turn one Epicure, turn two dispute, sack the blood token. You still get to keep the body you run to sack to ob or, or oven. Um, but Harvester gives you, like, doesn't allow you to do that. So those are kind of, like, the two major reasons why I'm a little skeptical of this, but we'll uh, we'll definitely see how it plays out. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the deck list, so. Um, this hand is very good if they play a Lanowar Elf on turn one. Uh, not the best if they don't, though. I mean, even if they play a one-drop, I can just do this on turn three. I think it's fine. This hand's nuts if they play Atlanta Ralph, but... <clears throat> untapped is a $40 one. Do you know what the cap is on that one? Because I, I know a lot of people are going untapped. You have a Team 2K this Saturday. I'm in the Pioneer seat and considering sack. I have the most experienced blue eye, but I want the guy to be more proactive. Yeah, I would highly recommend the Sacrifice deck. I think it's quite, quite good right now. So, Rakdos mid, it looks like. That was not the best draw. Although, hopefully they play Harvester this turn. That'd be good. No Harvester either. Okay, well, surely they're going to play a 3-drop next turn. Surely they're going to play... Uh, what you call it? Graveyard Trespasser. A strange game, huh? You got a Waterfall Song Request. Man, Waterfalls always hits me at the bangers. That's a good one to steal. That is, in fact, a good one to steal. All right, in the queue, Waterfalls, in the queue. All right, so ship that. I'll take that, please. Let's go attack first. 
Get my treasure. Did you know I went to buy the tokens in paper and the to the token, the Goblin Shama token is like $7. Like what? How is that possible? Okay, so let's go Mountain Witness Pass, I think. Can maybe do some fancy stuff next turn. <laughs> it's so crazy. It's it's $7 for a token from a set like three months ago. Like what? Yeah, it's insane. Like how is a how is it a, like a token, which is the the card type that is basically the most readily available out of all, unless it's like short printed or something. But it's the only thing that would make sense. You can post my Lunas Academy deck in the Modern Channel on your Discord later for some. Yeah, if you want to JS, I'm totally down. If you want to post in the Discord, I'm so down for it. So they play Blood Tie the Harvester. Okay, so why don't we go play land, I think. Let's go play land, play Mayhem Devil, Sack Treasure, Ping Harvester. Bring out the worst in me. I expect this to die this turn, but... Uh, okay, let's go Dispute Sack the Witness. Ping the Harvester. Oh, I guess they can't really kill the Mayhem Devil, right? Unless they have Fatal Push. Got punished for playing my land first, I guess, but... Uh, okay, so... I think now I'm just gonna pass, because I think they're gonna cast Fatal Push end of turn, and I just want to go sack the Devil and a Treasure to, to Deadly Dispute, so... I think I'm just gonna pass here. Yeah, I got punished for playing my land first, but it's fine. <clears throat> they didn't cast Fatal Push. Okay, that's fine. I'm, like, probably not that far away from just killing them next turn. So let's go black, black. Ping the Reflection. Dispute, Sack, Devil. Ping the Reflection. That resolves. Draw two. Dread is fine. This is when they play Trespasser, most likely. Okay, I'm just going to let that happen. That's fine. I can push it on my turn. I don't want to sack a treasure to push it. Broke set two, huh? Good god. I have so many options. How much mana do I have? Three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, I could just go Croxa flashback plus push. And I don't hate that. I could also go push discard Croxa, flashback Croxa. That's five mana, and then also play Harvester. It's not bad either. Because I could just go Sack Treasure. Push Trespasser, discard Croxa, flashback Croxa, then play Harvester. But it's kind of cool to play the Croxa twice to get two cards out of their hand. You know? Yeah, I kind of think I like just getting more cards out of their hand. Like, I mean, it's going to be nearly impossible for me to lose this game from this point, so it's like... I don't really think it matters what I do that much. But, because we're just so far ahead. I think the way I lose is maybe if they have their own Croxa, but... Like Croxa Blood Tide, they could have a land push attack with high exile Croxa. Uh, yeah, I guess that's a fair point. Well, they can do that anyways, right? Because this thing has Menace. I can't prevent that from happening, right? I guess there's no reason to push this now, right? Yeah, there's no reason to push this now. I could just wait. Yeah, there's just there's no reason to cast it. But if I how does how does playing Harvester prevent? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. If I go... I see what you're saying. If I leave them with two cards, they can go land, push, hive. So not playing the Harvester actually plays around that. I see what you're saying. I gotcha. Because otherwise, I'd leave them with an extra card in hand. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Obviously, I have seven cards in my hand. We're done. So this card's gas. I actually don't like Hearst that much. They don't do that much with the graveyard other than Croxa, but you can just push Croxa. Uh, I'm actually not a big fan of Ob in this matchup, oddly enough. Like, I feel like you don't have to do too... You don't have to make too many changes, because I think you are a pretty big favorite. Actually, I like the Eden Alive to kill uh, Kalidus. That card's kind of a problem. But yeah, I'm cool with this. I think no Ob is fine. Go blank is gas. I mean, it's only good against Croxa, though. I guess just mind-running them is kind of cool. But 
I don't know. I think this is fine. Yeah, Claim is insane in this matchup. Go Blank's okay, but... What's up, Max? Yeah, exactly. Like, the thing about Go Blank is their deck is going to be... Like, if they're trading one for one a lot, they're going to be empty-handed a lot quicker. So, like, you get to these spots, it's like... It has the same Thoughtsies problem where you draw Thoughtsies when you need to draw literally any card. And it has... It kind of has those same problems. This stands gas, by the way. Holy shit. This stands awesome. But it's like, it has that same problem, but, like, tenfold, right? Because you're drawing a 3-mana card as opposed to a 1-mana card, which you can't cast in the first couple of turns. Uh, I th think I'm going to lead on Oven. Just in case they have, like, something weird like Spike Field Hazard. I don't think I've ever seen them play Spike Field Hazard, but you never know. Oh, it's also better against Bone Crusher. Yeah, yeah. Because if I play Cat and then go to play the uh, go to play the of uh, the oven, they can respond to the oven and Bone Crusher the familiar. I think I'm just gonna play Harvester here just to use my mana better. I mean, they can't Bone Crusher because I can just sack it. So, I see the Japanese red black mid deck with Evelyn in it. No, I didn't. Evelyn's dope though. Bone Crusher is kind of embarrassing in this matchup, huh? <laughs> I mean, it's it's just a three mana four three. They can't ever cast Stomp unless they want to Stomp me. Yeah, Bone Crusher is not the best against Witches Huffin. <laughs> it's a play pattern we've seen a lot in Standard in the past. Yeah, upstairs. <laughs> Take it. I guess it's better than not casting it, sure. Upstairs. It's basically running Kalidus, Gifted Aetherborn, Evelyn. So it's... Oh, is it playing the, the other three mana vampire? The Corpse Appraiser, whatever it is? Because I've seen lists that have Corpse Appraiser. Ow. So now we can just go Village Rights plus Familiar, I think. Yeah, we'll just go Village Rights plus Familiar. Attack for 7, 13. Let's go Post Combat, right? Sack this. And. I guess we just have to hope they don't have Kalidus. Although. Oh no, if they have Kalidus, I can just kill it, right? I can just go Harvester, Sack Harvester. That's kind of cool. So yeah, even if they have Kalidus, it's actually not the worst. I mean, they get a 2-2, but... Imagine Morbin. What's up, B-Sams? Strangle. I think they have a way to exile this cat. Guess this is better against Bone Crusher anyways. Graveyard Trespasser. You got it. <clears throat> you got it. So, I don't think there's ever a world where I'm going to be shooting the Trespasser with Cat, but I might just want to dome them with the Devil, so. Uh, let's go... I mean, I could also just sandbag the Devil. I don't have to play it yet, right? I could just go Harvester, Cat, Pass. Yeah. I could also discard Cat to Blood? Oh, I could just loot away the land, it's probably fine. Yeah, so we'll just go Mountain Pass. Can loot away the land. Only if they don't play Kalidus, because if they play Kalidus, I want to keep both blood tokens to be able to kill Kalidus. Just like that if everyone dies, you can't cast the spells. Yeah, I remember we played a version of Grixis Vampires a while back with the Corpse Appraiser. Oh, it's just Rakdos. Okay. Yeah, so the version that I played a while back, it had blue for Corpse Appraiser and I think some counter spells in the sideboard. And it seemed like a pretty significant upgrade to just, like, the traditional Rakdos midrange deck. Although, Gifted Aetherborn is kind of just a shit card. Like, I really, really dislike Aetherborn in this format. I, I think it's but it, it's bad against both Phoenix and Monogreen. Kalidus is good, though. Kalidus is a good card. And I think Evelyn's decent. I was, like, moderately impressed with the Corpse Appraiser, too. I think that card's not bad. If you're, you know, willing to splash blue. All right, what you got, Last Fish? The Last Fish. What cards are good against Mono Green? Um, kind of depends on what deck you're playing. Like, I think black cards that are good against that are, like, Epic Downfall. It's probably my favorite one. And I think it's called Soul Release. I think that's the card that it's called. It's, like, it's from the new set, BB1. I think it's called Soul Release. I like that card, but it's expensive. Um, red cards, I mean, maybe Alpine Moon, but it really depends on your deck. I think you should, so here's the thing, I think you should only consider bringing in Alpine Moon and Damping Sphere against Monogreen if you're pressuring them. Like, if you're playing, uh, like a mid-range or control deck and you're trying to bring in Alpine Moon against Nykthos, the games are gonna go long and they're just gonna make all their land drops. 
So, like, you shouldn't just bring in... You shouldn't just bring in, you know, Damping Sphere and Alpine Moon unless you're playing, like, a hyper-aggressive deck. That's a, that's a common misconception about Mono Green. All right, Fable's fine. We kind of kill that with the Devil. Yeah, Soul Transfer. That's what it is, Soul Transfer. That is the one. They are targeting... What are they targeting? Oh, the Bone Crusher Giant. Okay, sure. Guess I will block sack. Try to bring in try to bring in Sphere against Kevin when I was on Rakdos, but it was complete boop. Yeah, exactly. You just like that card those cards just don't do anything unless you're clocking. I think I keep both cats in play in my graveyard, right? With the devil. Uh do I even want to loot? Okay, how much damage do I have next turn? <clears throat> So, Sack Cat, Sack Cat, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I can make it 10, because I can send 2 here and then attack them for 3. So I have 10 damage currently showing. I think that means I don't want to use the Blood Token quite yet. I mean, most likely, that is a very, very interesting draw. Okay, so let's... That, I think, might be close to lethal, right? Let's start with this. We can go Dispute Sack of Blood Token. Okay. <laughs> Hard. I think it's fine. I don't think people are... I don't think people are complaining about Mayhem Devil. The card that people are complaining about is this shit. This is... This is kind of toxic. Not when you don't have lands, though. Okay, I guess. Uh, I think I keep all my spells... So I keep these two, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rather play against Oko than get of it, he says. I don't know if I'd go that far, but... Proceed. I guess it was still better to play this first. In case I draw Den or something, but... No, it's not going to get banned. There's no shot it gets banned. We're mostly just kind of memeing here. There's no way in hell it gets banned. It is kind of funny that they uh, they nerfed it. I guess they, they neutered the cat on Arena, as it were. Unironically neutered the cat. They made Oko as the counter to cat oven because you could elk the oven, but then with the Oko ban, cat just ran wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, imagine yeah, imagine standard if they didn't ban Oko. Uh, this kind of sucks. I'm going to be real with you, chat. This kind of sucks. I think I'm going to loot away Grosa. Guess I might as well kill the elf. Not doing anything else with this Blood Scythe Harvester. Feels pretty bad, though. Yeah, I mean, we also multiplied, didn't draw claim. Like, obviously, when you draw Harvester, Harvester, Croaksa lands against Mono Green, that's not how you beat them. I think the matchup's close, but. <clears throat> Can confirm standard Oko did not have much cat oven. Well, yeah, that's because 90% of the format was Oko, <laughs> right? That doesn't really count. T-S-R Blitz, thank you for that Twitch Prime. Appreciate you. Welcome back, welcome back. Hope you're having a good day today. They also made Ember Shield Breaker and Ember Cleave to kill the Cat Oven. Deck was fine. Cat Oven is fine. You're all just salty people. <laughs> Six mana, huh? What could this be? I'm just firing this up. Alright, what's my best draw here? Mm, it probably involves multiple things. Like Claim into Dispute. It's not a horrendous card. I have to chump block with it, though. Is there any chance I leave back the Harvester? I mean, I think I'm just going to go attack Kiora, chump block the lair, if they fire up the lair again. I have to hope their hand is just all air, though. When you made the unit of the cat on Arena, it looked up Cauldron Familiar and didn't see a different version for Alchemy. Yeah, the version for Alchemy says it's the cat can't block. Oh, is it Historic? Okay. It's Historic, then. Wait, they're changing cards in Historic, too? I thought that was only Alchemy. What? Wait, 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 wait. I thought they only changed cards in Alchemy. What the fuck? So, wait. Wait, 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 wait. So, they're... They're also changed in Historic? I don't even... I, I just... I don't even know Arena anymore, shit. I, I have no clue. 
I have absolutely no idea. Uh, are we dead? Uh, I think we're kind of alive. Barely alive, but... So, okay, what happened then? So they neutered the cat. What is it neutered in? Is it only historic? I'm so confused. It's just historic? Okay, that's so fucking confusing. Uh, that kills me? Not technically. I can block sack go to one. I mean, I don't think I have any outs, but... Tef3 is Tef4 in historic? I mean, that kind of makes sense, right? Fuck, fuck Tef3. <laughs> Yeah, I also don't care to understand. I agree with Brittany. Nobody actually knows what happens in Historic. Or Alchemy, or just any arena platform for that matter. Oh wait, I forgot to get back the cat. Shit. I went yield until next end step, but I need to get back the cat to, to gain life. Whoops! I think we were still kind of fucked anyways, but... Alright, bring in this, bring in this... I don't see... I don't think I'm going to bring in Moon Sphere. I think these... I don't think that's what this is about. I kind of want to try bringing in Go Blank, but... I think Fable's too slow. I hate Kroxa. This looks okay. Just kind of lowering the curve a little bit. This is how I usually sideboard with the version that I usually play, except obviously these would be Epicures, but... I'm going to set the same playstyle because we gravitate towards similar decks. Rhino's like Wolf Five Rescue with Sack and Pioneer. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. I know. I've seen you play a lot of Rhinos too, and I know you were playing a lot with the Sack deck. Finally, giving it. Finally, trying out Fable to see how it goes. Hmm. Rampage make them Sack a Walker. The problem with Rampage is like, I feel like Kiora is pretty expendable. So making them sacrifice Kiora doesn't seem that great. I think. You know, maybe I'm crazy for cutting Fable, but I just think it's too slow. I think you just need to be as low to the ground as possible against them. I just try to go under them. Which is not easy, but... If I don't win this week, it means having to play two weeks worth of Pioneer. Not a bad format, just played none of it lately. I feel like you would really enjoy this deck, Ryan. I feel like this is right up your alley. Uh... I mean, this hand has lands and spells, and I kind of have to keep it, but I don't think it's that good against Mono Green. Can maybe just go, like, beatdown plan... <clears throat> Playable and wonky is my speed for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm just going to play Harvester and try to, again, just get under them. We can go turn two Harvester, turn three Harvester plus Cat. Or we could even go turn three Cat plus Dispute if we wanted to. But it is kind of nice that this attacks past Carrioted. Oh, I don't give a shit about that card. Ooh, new plan. Yeah, I'm pretty happy they brought in Unlicensed Terrace. Because I do not really give a shit about that card. I feel like a lot of people bring this in against Rakdos Sack, and I think that some it is good in some decks to bring it in, but, like, I don't think I would bring that card in if I was my opponent. Alright, what's the best way to do this? I think I want to... I want to play the Thoughtseize this turn. So, I think I want to start with... Maybe just Dispute Sack Blood Token, kill the Elf. Yeah, I think that's fine. Dispute Sack Blood. I don't necessarily want to put the Cat into the Graveyard yet. So let's go Dispute Sack Blood, kill Elf. And then we get Thoughtseize with the Hive and leave up the, the Treasure. What you got? Yeah. No, this game's over. This game's over. We are done. I might save the treasure. Uh, 13, they go to 6, they go to 4. No, I guess it's better to just play it. Yeah, it's better to just play it. Proceed. Alright, well, Harvester looked pretty good this game, just because it was a 3-power creature that attacks. <laughs> like... Harvester did look at the kid did look good that game. I bring in Hidetsuga over Hearse, but Hidetsuga only good against Sack, so that's the in the 15 is meh. Yeah, the problem I have with Hearse is like, so you might think that this deck utilizes the graveyard a decent amount, but 
realistically, the only the only interaction that really touches the graveyard is Cauldron Familiar plus Oven. And if you have Oven in play, you can very easily play around Hearse by just having an extra food available. So it's like, it's not going to do that. It's not. It doesn't really do as much as you think it does. It's more of just like a nuisance. It like kind of makes me, it makes me commit another resource to the Oven to then start sacrificing the cat to play around the Hearse, right? It's kind of like, it, it doesn't really actually do what you want it to do. It just kind of slows me down a little bit, essentially. I got a song request. I want to see, did I, I don't think I missed a song request, but I want to double check. Now we're good. Rumahoy, Cowboys of the Sea. All right, let's give it a shot. All right, it is in the queue. It'll play after the song. Ah, I want to keep this hand so bad. Honestly, I think if this was Blood Crypt, I'd, I would actually keep this hand. Because it kind of has everything, except the second land. But the issue is we have to play this as black. But I guess we still have Cat. Ah, man, I want to keep this so bad. I know I shouldn't, but I want to. Is your relationship with the Fire Format ended again, Uncle Doom? I mean, the thing about, like, the thing about Modern is... I have no intention to play any deck that isn't Rhinos, and nobody, like, Rhinos is just super boring to watch, so I'm just going to play Pioneer. Okay, this hand is actually quite good. I think I put back Takanuma. This hand's excellent. Mm -mm. <laughs> Thoughts on Abzan, Greasefang, JM, and finished third during the recent challenge. I took a look at the list pretty briefly. I didn't, I just kind of, like, quickly scanned over it. I didn't think that there was anything, like, to it, it looks sweet for sure it definitely looks sweet but i think my biggest issue with grease fang is again card the great creator right it's like it's really really difficult to play grease fang when this is a deck because like the grease fang deck just can't ever beat karn in a million years so it's it's kind of rough how about playing some glimpse of tomorrow it's just like I don't know. That's just way too many clicks. Way too many clicks. Kill Karn. There's actually a couple different ways I could kill Karn. I could go Harvester, eat and alive, kill Karn. Or I could go Harvester, claim, haste my Harvester, and attack Karn for six. And I think that's better. It does make me use the claim. But the thing is, they didn't play a... Well, I guess they didn't really have an opportunity to play a troll... I can't really let them have the Karn, though, because then they just get Boat. I think I'm just going to haste the Harvester. I don't love it, but I think it's better to keep the Harvester in play, especially if they have a second Karn, you know? That's what this play is really good against. Yeah, Trespasser, too. That's another good reason to not play Grease Fang. So, like, I think Grease Fang is super powerful, and I think there's a lot of cool, like, room to explore and different um, different builds to, to try out. I just find that I, I have a really hard time believing that Grease Fang is where you want to be when uh, Karn the Great Creator is such a, a, wide, a widely played card. Yeah, Hearse too. If three cards, I guess I just go Devil, Sack a Harvester, Exile this thing, right? Can maybe fire up the dead next turn. I certainly want to keep the, the Devil in play, that's for certain. Wait. Oh, it's five mana. Okay, I thought this was four mana. Because I was saying, if this was four mana, I should just hard cast this, but... It's four additional mana, not four total mana. This is the exact matchup that I want to play more copies of Eaten Alive for. In the RCQ that I played over the weekend, I had one main, one sideboard, and I really like the second uh, Eaten Alive. Misa. Okay... They attack, I'm 100% blocking. What is this attack? This is... This is the loosest attack I've ever seen. Why would they make that attack? I'm just gonna kill their Nissa now. What? What the hell? Alright, I mean, sure, I guess. Why would they attack there? Why would you play Giant Growth? What do you mean? What about Giant Growth? They have an elf. Elf's fine. Uh, do I want to kill the elf? Unclear. If I sack Harvester, 
Fire up Den. Puts them to 10, which I have a two-turn clock. If I don't sack Harvester, Fire up Den, attack them for 8. They go to 7, play a blocker. I think I'm supposed to just keep the Harvester in play, right? Yeah, I think I'm supposed to keep the Harvester in play. It's just more important to attack with it. The song's kind of the song kind of slaps. Oh, why wouldn't I play around Giant Growth? I see what you're saying. I read that as why wouldn't you play Giant Growth, and I was like, what are you talking about, John? Oh, I fucked up. I'm stupid. I should have uh, I should have fired up the Hive. Exile the Storm. No, that's one less damage though. Yeah, they can't flashback Storm. So if this hits two blockers, they can survive. But they only hit one blocker, they die. Yeah, they're dead. Right? Three, four, five, six, seven, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I probably shouldn't have won this game if they just didn't attack with the land that one turn. But... Oh, they have a second blocker. Right, 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 right. Okay, 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 okay. Uh... Unironically, that doesn't kill them, right? Yeah, that doesn't kill them. In sack the token for lethal. Uh, no, because if I play the Mayhem Devil, I can't sacrifice the token. I have no cards in hand. But then a one. So if I go fire up Den, shove with everything. Actually, wait, I probably have to fire up the Hive. Oh, no, they have two Storms. Kill a Lantern Elf, ping, ping my Witness, hope to hit. So I could go Mayhem Devil, Sack Harvester to target the Elf, and then ping the Witness... But then I'm, like, not dealing them any damage, right? They do die to claim, I guess. Or actually, I'm still one short even if I claim, right? Because I put them to one, they still they get the troll back. <coughs> well, here's the problem with that line, right? If I take that line, if I go Mayhem Devil, Sack My Harvester, Ping My Witness, and I miss, I'm not dealing them any damage this turn. So it's, like, it's really, really risky. And I, I think Fire Up Den just shove with everything... Force them to block with the Elf, put them to three, lose the Den, but who cares? Like, activate Hive over Den. It's one less damage, though. I feel like the one damage is super important. So here's the thing about that, Brittany. If they only had one Storm, I would agree with you, but they have two Storms anyways, right? And I think the one damage is way more important because they have two Storms. That's at least, that's kind of where I'm at. I think I'm going to fire up the Den. It's really close, though. Really, really close. They double the I, I do six. Yeah, I'm saying the whole point is I just, I want, they're not going to block the I, though. They just block this and this, and they take five. Or they take four, right? Or no, no, they take three, because I have one less token. Exile Festival? Yeah, but I'm dealing one less damage, chap. This would have put them to four, because I would have one less token attacking. And again, they have two storms anyways. If they only had one storm, I think that line is better. But they have two storms. I don't think there's a point in exiling one of them. Like, I like I don't think they're going to be able to cast both. And if they do, I'm probably losing anyways. Right? But maybe that's bad logic. Thoughts on the scales deck I was playing a bit back. I think... That deck was interesting, Gandalf. There's a lot of different ways to build it. I think the version that I had the most success with was kind of the hybrid of, like, scales plus fight rigging. Because I think fight rigging is kind of messed up. But I don't think you want to go all in on fight rigging, because then you kind of just, you end up with these, like, really non-functional draws. Like, if you put a bunch of Ulamogs and Masker Worms in your deck, you're just going to have uh, a bunch of bricks, right? So, I think the versions that I was having the most success with, and you can find the list on Stream Decker, um, were, like, Hybrid, Scales, Fight Rigging, Constrictor. And then your top end was, like, Gear Hulk Symbiosis. Those were your payoffs for fight rigging. That was a really cool deck, and I think there's there's really some, there's definitely something there. Just got home, post the deck in the modern section of Discord. I'll take a look at it after. Any advice on sideboarding with Sack Slower Decks? With Sack Slower Decks. So I assume you're talking about sideboarding with Sack versus Slower Decks, like Control? Okay. Um, what I would recommend... Well, I mean, I mean against Control, it's pretty easy, right? You just cut the claims and the pushes. You only have 9 mana. Did they already activate Cavalier? Or, they already activated Kiora? Oh, dope. So did they just miscount? Did they not have enough to play the Storm without casting a spell? I thought they did. So they go... They, ha they already had the Haven, right? So it's 3, 4, 5, untap, 3, 8, 10. Oh, but they didn't have a land in hand. I think that's what it was. I think they didn't have a land in hand. Isn't attacking with high board damage with that line? 
Uh, oh, right, because they block the Harvester and a token. So I actually get in four damage? No, five, yeah. So I guess the Hive is more damage. Yeah, I guess you're right. I don't know why I thought it was less. Yeah, because they can't... Yeah, because the Hive has... Uh, you just had a third storm. Okay. <sighs> Dicey. But yeah, the Hive has Menace, so yeah, you're right. It is more damage to attack with the Hive. Which is maybe better. God. Oh, <laughs> we're still gonna lose. Uh, we're still gonna lose. Control Despair. Need five blockers. Well, they can get two with Karn, right? With Chariot. I guess that's still not enough if they get Chariot. Right, Chariot, four blockers. Block, 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 take four. Yeah, because the hive because the hive has menace. Yeah, not everybody has chariot either. I mean, there's a chance I just die. Wait, I'm, I just did the chain veil. Yeah, I'm just did the chain veil, right? Yeah, I think I'm just dead. Pretty sure this is a kill. All right. Well, it turns out it didn't matter, so I was dead regardless. They can get needle for hive. Wait, they only have nine mana. They're short, right? Nine. I think they're short. I don't fucking know, man. What's the math on that? How many devotion do they need? I haven't actually, I haven't actually um, tried messing with the chain veil yet. I don't actually know how much devotion they need. <laughs> I have no idea. I guess they gain a bunch of life either way, but no, they need less than thirteen with chain veil. Yeah, I think that's a kill, right? Three Kiora, four floating, untap. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure that's a kill. <clears throat> Should I pick up a Chain Veil if I'm going to play Mono Green? Yes. So I think the, the good thing about the Chain Veil is it allows you to combo off from, from uh, lower resources. Like before, you needed 14 Devotion to combo off, whereas this line, you only need, uh, I believe it's 10. Might be less than that. I think it's only 10, but let them consume their time. I don't want to make you guys just sit here for 30 minutes while my opponent combos off. That's bad for content. I'd rather just move on if I'm dead. Scoop to conceal. It's game three. <laughs> It's called the content scoop. I mean, I'm sure you guys are bored watching this. Unban Ballista. It would make the Mono Green kill a lot quicker. You think they messed up? How did they mess up? Oh, they did mess up. Unironically, they messed up. I mean, I can't kill them because they're at fucking 11 now, but... They can also get Needle. <laughs> I still can't kill them. I don't think I have any else to kill them either. What's my best draw? Probably Deadly Dispute to kill the Karn into, like, Double Claim or something. Can't activate the blood. Okay, so what I can do is I can go Mayhem Devil, Blood Tithe Harvester, kill the Elf, and ping the Witness to get two looks. I don't think I have outs, but... Okay, there's Deadly Dispute. Okay, so now we can go Dispute, Sack, Token, Pink, Karn, and then rip exactly Double Claim. That's enough. If I hit exactly Double Claim, Dispute the Blood Token. Well, can't I loot the Blood Token away? Oh, I guess I won't have enough mana if I draw Double, even, yeah, 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 yeah. Guess that's fine. So yeah, this pings Karn. That is not double claim. Think that's game? There's nothing I could do. All right, we're dead. The sand is pretty good. Keep it. Scary Terry. Is Devontae Parker considered a sleeper? I don't know, man, is he? Again, I haven't paid attention to any fantasy this year. I don't know what's considered a sleeper and what's not considered a sleeper, so... Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, that's a little annoying, but I can steal the 5-5. Five five. Let's lead on up in here, I think. I've been high on Parker for three years, and I've been wrong every time. There was, I think there was one year that I was high on Parker. I think it was two years ago. And yeah, it's just every single, every single time I think Parker's going to do something, I just get, kind of get bitten in the ass. I wouldn't put Wentz on my team in an 11 quarterback league. I got Josh Allen at the, with a steal last year. I think I got Josh Allen, or maybe it was the year before. It was the year like that Josh Allen really broke out. I think I got him in like the fucking 
the 10th round or some shit. It was crazy. Uh, this is kind of annoying. But I guess I can just go sack this, exile this, because I don't want this to come back. So let's go claim this, combat, attack, second main, exile, sack this, go. Mm -hmm. How old is Keenan Allen? Feels like he's been in the league forever. He's got to be at least 30, right? Adeline? It's a little dicey. All right, well, let's see how this Fable card is. Let's see how good this Fable card is. Can block the 1-1 one -one with Fable. I use a tenant, that's fine. Gotta find an answer to this, this Adeline, though. It's gonna clap me. They have two cards in hand. I don't know what they are. Go to 10. Okay, so I think I'm looting away both lands. Okay. Let's go witness, sack witness to oven. Or actually, eh, is that better than sacking to dispute? Maybe. Not sure. Now I can go dispute the food token to try to find claim or push. Yeah, let's go dispute the food token. Need a claim or a push, though. That is neither of those. So I guess we can go witness. Probably play the oven as well. Just pass. Block sack with the witness. Take three, most likely. <laughs> Do I think Rennes is a good Merktide matchup? I think it's really close. They got me on the F6. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too I'm too much I'm too in about the F6 value, especially when I'm talking to Chap. I'm excited for copy cat sack it to oven. Copy cat. Well I'm gonna be blocking with witness this turn. How spicy are my meatballs in this deck? Uh not that spicy. Yeah, cool. Auto yields. Block. Okay, Deadly Dispute and Claim. Those are good cards. Problem is we can't cast both of them. But I can certainly claim this. Okay. Um. Hmm. In one card in hand? I'm at four. So if I claim the Adeline... Attack, block the token, second main, probably play a Fable to have an extra blocker back, and then I probably have to chump this with the Fable token, keep this in play. Yeah, so let's claim this thing. Live in Oklahoma, River is a Cowboys or a Chiefs fan. <laughs> I mean, I'm a Cowboys fan, so, you know. Somehow, a Cowboys fan living in Massachusetts. Don't know how that works, but... I'm just going to make an extra food here. I guess I miss out on a damage doing it this way. But I think that's okay. This. Play tap land. Okay. Your turn. Okay. So dead any human. That is in fact any human. Well, never drew Mayhem Devil. This matchup is kind of a buy if you drop Mayhem Devil, but you actually have to draw that card. Uh, don't really think I'm going to be sideboarding much here. Fan of the previous Evil Empire. <laughs> Cowboys ran some weird places to be fans. Yeah, I know. I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's just the Cowboys, right? That's just the mantra. What deck is Rampage for? I think it's mostly for control. Um, I thought about it more. Maybe I am supposed to bring it in against Monogreen. It's weird because it's kind of an answer to Karn, but at the same time, they'll likely just have a Kiora to kind of block for it, so I don't even know. Where, like, that's... I, I thought about bringing it against Monogreen, and then I was like, well, they just set Kiora. But in the games where they don't have Kiora, because Karn is the most important card, I think it's probably something you just have to bring in. 
We them boys. But yeah, it's like pretty good against blue-white control too, because they have Wandering Emperor. I guess it's not that good against Emperor specifically, but Tef all that stuff. Keep. Yeah, this matchup is is pretty easy as long as you uh don't get horribly unlucky like we did game one. My subtlety in my Rano's board. Uh I don't think I was playing subtlety in my most recent version. I have to take a look at the Fable one. I don't remember if I played Subtlety in the Fable Rhinos list. I know it's on Stream Decker, but... Play Subtlety in main. I did that for a little bit. And it wasn't terrible. I declare no blocks. I will claim the Firstborn, your Luminarch Aspirant. Attack for two damage. And then I will cast Deadly Dispute. Cauldron Familiar. Had two and two cards, great versus four color and merc. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really it's a, it's a good card for sure. Extraction specialist. Don't really care that much about that. Yeah, this is fine. Ah, the call into my cauldron familiar. I'm not going to get it back now because I'm just going to... Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a way you can lose to them, I guess. Proceed. Mm -mm. She either draw, like, you know, any spell. <laughs> just any spell. <laughs> Obviously, we draw Mayhem Devil spot, but that's really annoying, so that gets Kroxa. Uh... Alright, I might unironically lose to this deck. I didn't know that was possible, but did not know that was possible. I think I have to push the Kudro. So let's get this back. Block the Extraction Specialist. Sack the cat, push the Kudro. We got two cards left. So Kudro dies. We take three. Not going to get back the cat. Yeah, I mean, if we draw a devil, we still win. Sure. I don't know why they brought in Thoughtseize. Don't think that's good from their side. It's not horrible either. Oh, maybe I'm supposed to attack with the Hive that turn instead of playing Oven. They're pretty fucking low. Yeah, that might have been better. But I mean, this is still fine, right? We're still pretty far ahead. Maybe the Hive would have been good there. Put them to five, and then I can still do a Cat Loop, even with one Oven in play. If you're supposed to mulligan more aggressively than I did. No, I mean, like, Cat plus Oven plus Deadly Dispute, you can't mulligan those hands. Against pretty much anything. Those, that's like, that's, that's the dream hand, basically. They have lifelink? Yeah, but I can block sacks. They can't gain life. I just go block with cat sack at the oven. They can't, they're not going to gain life with this. Ever. That's why, they, that's why they haven't been gaining life. That's why they didn't gain life last turn. What do we got? Another oven was good. Yeah, but I think that was just a poor use of my mana. I think I was supposed to fire up the hive that turn. Because then next turn, I can go fire up hive and play the oven. So it's just more damage to fire up the hive that turn. Especially when they were tapped out with no blockers. Like, that was the freest turn to get in three damage. Whereas, like, now they could theoretically have push. So I think that was a mistake. I don't think it matters. Like, I think we're still miles ahead, but... I can't really imagine losing this game. Oops, wrong one. Block. Sack. Do do get back at yada yada. Oh, this is just lethal, isn't it? It's just lethal, right? Yeah, they're just dead. All right, they go to five, take four, go to one. Yeah, they're just dead. Sick. <laughs> Zach, pick a random card. 
Suck my cat. Game three. Submit. Let's go. <clears throat> each weapon represents one damage over each turn, so in two turns it makes up for the difference. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, we lost the mono green. Pretty unfortunate draws. This hand's fucking nuts. Jesus. Holy shit, this hand's crazy. Uh, yeah, we lost the mono green. They had th basically like the games that I that I tend to lose to mono green are when they have two mana ramp spell into Karn, and that's exactly what they did. They had turn two Haven, turn three Karn, and like we took a line where we went Blood Tithe Harvester, haste it to kill their Karn, and then we like I don't know we we were just like just a couple points short of killing them. It was a close ish game, but mm -mm. they have three caves of Quillas, only one color sources. Yeah. Mm -mm. Right, exactly. And that that's kind of exactly where I'm at, too. It's like, if they don't have Karn on turn three, I think you're fine for the most part, but if they go turn... If they have the draw of turn two ramp, turn three Karn, it's really hard to win. You know? Right, yeah. Yeah, I was talking about it earlier, and it's like, I think the matchup is super close, but the games are usually blowouts, if that makes sense. You know? Uh, what am I playing on one here? I can just play Oven on one. Although, Oven on 1 is worse against Portable Hole specifically, so maybe we should play the Witness to try and bait a Portable Hole. Yeah, it's probably better. Because I don't want them holding this. Oops. I mean, I'd like to give them... I'd like them to play a creature that I want to steal. No? Uh, Alright, I guess we just attack and play Cat Oven, I think. Uh, Shh. Are they actually going to block? Cool with that. Haunted Ridge and Claim the Firstborn. Alright, well, change of plans, I guess. Just do this, because I want to get used to, I want to get the, the card off of the Unlucky Witness. I think they have Adeline, so now they go Adeline, then I claim it and kill it. Oh, no Adeline. Is choosing between legends to keep state-based effects considered a sack? Is that a reason to play devil instead of put- No, 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 it's not. It's- that that doesn't count. Hmm. So I could dispute sack the food, which does set me up better for devil next turn, so I think that's fine. Also, I could hit a land drop to play cat. Yeah, perfect. Because I was like, I don't really want to sacrifice the cat, or sacrifice the treasure to play the cat, so I really wanted to hit a land there, because I want to keep this in play for when I devil next turn. They just end their career. How did I punt? They should have played this in response to the cat, right? What are they doing? They could have responded to the cat. Why don't I attack there? Because I cast it post-combat. I cast my spell post-combat. Because what happened was I attacked with Witness, they flashed in the Priest, blocked, and then I played the claim post-combat off of the Witness trigger. It was definitely not a punt. Uh, so, end their whole career? I'm down to end their whole career. We'll do that. We'll claim that. We'll attack. Well, I guess not their whole career, but most of their career. <laughs> See ya. Now they have the Adeline. I could just kill that thing, right? Why are they attacking? What is happening? Have they have they given up? Pretty sure they've just given up. I swear. Now we are done. Wouldn't I have given up by now? Probably, yeah. <laughs> I probably would have, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. I told you that matchup is easy as long as you draw Mayhem Devil. <laughs> yeah, it is Awkward but Specialist, so you probably don't want to play Rip at that point. Gigantha. Uh, well, Gigantha usually means creatures, so I'm going to keep this hand. Could be the mirror. That's on Claim to Fame. Eh. Not in love with Claim to Fame. Oh. Oh. And Soul Artifact? Let's go... Red Source Oven. Proceed. Board out Specialist a lot. Yeah, it's definitely a card that is Eater of Virtue. Um, it's a card that's that gets a little bit worse when you're like trying to be a little bit faster, right? 
it's more for the grindy matchups. So how can I say that so, like, so, like, so this is just a bone splitter. Three cards. It's like kind of not that good to claim here. But I also just don't want to do nothing. I can't I don't really want to sack my oven. But I kinda of want to save claim for like a card that I actually care about, you know? But the cool thing about casting claim is then I get something to cast the dispute. Like I can just go dispute sack the 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 token. It's kinda of weird. Kinda of schweird. I think I'm supposed to cast claim, but I don't actually love this play that much. I just wanna I don't wanna do nothing with my turn. I wanna use my mana. Just gives me another material. But it is obviously a lot worse if they then like, you know, present two threats that I have to claim and now I'm down a claim. What's up, Soraya? Overcooked gingerbread. Throw them into the oven. Blackstaff is a card that is decent against claim. So say Machiko's Reign of Truth. This thing's only sorcery speed though, right? Okay. So as long as I take this, I can't really get hit by the Machikos again, which is kind of good. A little scary though. So let's go claim this. I think I'm going to attack first and then post combat deadly disputes. Not great, being honest. Kind of awkward. I don't know what the sword is, but it's pretty. It's essentially just a bone splitter. Okay, patchwork automaton, one card in hand. I'm very surprised they didn't just... Why didn't they just black staff the citadel here? Put me to seven. I feel like that's what I would have done. I think I like that play a little bit more. Okay. Um... Interesting. I think I start with Dispute on the food. And then if I miss, I can still sack a treasure to play the Fable. Yeah, maybe they don't know. They might not know. Uh, okay, two blockers. I'm down to play two blockers here. Just get a bunch of stuff on the battlefield. So it's less li less likely we die next turn. Then we can... Th that's the really nice thing about Fable looks really good here, because I can just loot away two of these fucking lands. So Fable does look really good here. We'll also go to the DGD concert end of month. Uh, I don't... I think they're coming to our area. I don't recall exactly when, though. Yay. Yeah, they must not... They must not know that you can blackstaff the Citadel. I guess they're going to blackstaff the Patchwork. You no, know, they're going after the Ornithopter? I guess that makes sense. Oh, it's in Austin? Okay. I think they might be coming to my area. All right, let's loot away two lands. Probably just the tap lands. That's a good one. Question is, how good is it? Can I actually get four triggers? I know that I can. Play land for turn. Play devil. Tap oven, sack witness. One ping. Play oven... Attack with Shaman, Treasure. Sack Shaman to Oven, 2 ping. Sack Treasure, 3 ping. Yeah, I can. I can, I can kill the Ornithopter. So, why don't we go Castle, Devil, Sack Witness, go from there. Thoughts on Jund and Modern? Jund Saga? Probably okay. I'm just, I don't know. I don't really know how you're supposed to beat 4 color with Jund, though. Blood Tithe Harvester. And I've already played my land. That's a little awkward. Man, I don't. I really don't want to just take six in the air. <clears throat> the one creature will gain flying when the staff is equipped. Whenever an equipped creature dies, exile it. As long as a card equipped with Eidre Virtue has flying, equipped creature has flying, the same is true for first strike, double strike. Oh, I see. I should read the card. Okay, well, at that point, I'm just going to pass and take six then, I guess. I should probably have read the card before I did that. Reading the card explains the card. I had no idea what this card did. 
<laughs> yeah, I did say earlier it's just a bone splitter, right? <laughs> Uh, shit. Mm, that kills me too, right? Damn it! Eh, fine. Let's bring in Thoughtseize, Claim. Again, another matchup I think we're a massive favorite in, but... I actually don't love Rampage. Because they can just sack a random shitter to it. Uh, I think Fable's too slow. This card's probably too slow. Croaks is too slow. Let's do that. Yeah, this this we should be a massive favorite of this matchup, but our draw just kind of lined up pretty awkwardly. Unless you're Reduker is Blood Relative, don't play Boomer Jund. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're if you insist on playing a Jund deck, I mean, you can look at Jund Saga, but I just again, I don't really know how that deck's supposed to be four color. Yeah, again, and Soul is another deck that's you know it's really hard to justify playing a deck with artifacts when Card the Great Creator is a card. Um, I guess in Soul is maybe a little bit better because they can go under. Like, they can put a lot of pressure on very early, but still might be a little bit dicey against Karn. Anyone know if MH3 is confirmed? God. I fucking hope not. I have one question for you on your Rhinos. Playing 73 versus 75 right now, and it's been fantastic. Next to my front paper of time is 4th Firewalker and 3rd Subtlety. Um, 3rd Subtlety. You don't ever need the 4th Firewalker because you just cascade into it. Like... Drawing it in your open hand is cool, but I think playing three is more than enough. Even if you had a shit ton of burn, I would still... You don't need more than three. Three is plenty. All right, Shigant the time. I have Foil Gem Saga if you want to trade for it. <laughs> Mike has gone to the dark side and switched to Rhinos. Will LTR be Pioneer, Pioneer Legal? I think so. I'm not sure, though. Oh, MH3 is the Lord of the Rings set? Okay. Well, if that's the case, probably not then. Yeah, it's just a little excessive. Hands great. Get a turn one oven, have a push, have a devil, have a dispute. Definitely a keeper. To go. Let's pop this bad boy out. How it found tapped. What the hell? What the hell? No portable hole? Maybe a rest in peace? Patchwork Automaton. Okay, that's fine. We have Fatal Push, so... Really care that much? Can also potentially just go, like, dis I don't want to speed sack Devil, but... Blue, white. Glass, casket. Uh... It's a little annoying, but that's fine. I could just sack the Devil... Can go sack the devil, ping them for one, make a food, and then sack the food to dispute. I mean, I'm going to push this this turn, but. What's up, Wavelink? Ooh, they don't have a land? At least their hand's five spells. I was going to kill this thing now. I don't want them to have, like, stub or something. I'd rather just not mess around with that. Now if they have in soul, I have another push, so I don't really care. That's fine. Just ping that. Standard all-star glass casket. Yes. Why, yes, it is. Citadel. Looks like they have a stone coil serpent. Sure. Can't ping that with devil, but... Um... Hmm. I think I'm just gonna play devil and hold up... Hold up push. The intention of potentially pushing this, if I have to. Could also save it, but... I guess they probably have another casket with the slow hand that they kept. Like, if they're going to keep a hand this slow, they probably have another answer to a devil, but... Uh, you will not be scrying. Guess I'm just going to dome them. Because I can't ping this because it's a 2-2. Two -two. I mean, I'm allowed to, but... Try to push the snake. Ah, uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what this last card is. Patchwork Automaton. Yeah, I'm just gonna save damage, I think. Save a little bit of damage. They have two cards left. They have two 1-1s. One I think we're fine. I think we'll be okay. Sack that. 
Draw some cards. That is not bad. I actually kind of want to save the claim just in case their last card is in Soul Artifact. So I'm just going to chill. And then I can just kind of blow them out next turn with Devil Claim. Ninja Brute. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is like a this is like a setup turn. Gotta just get you just double them next turn. Is this version better than the big OB version? Big OB, big Obnix list? I mean it's essentially just cutting what we essentially did was we just cut Obnix list for Fable. Like we still have one Obnix list in our deck, but I have been pretty impressed with Fable, I will say that. I have liked Fable quite a bit. Uh Okay. I O2 dropped Modern, and I went 4-2 in Pioneer. I, I lost playing for top 8. Unironically, this is a lot of damage. Uh, easiest trade of my life. Yeah. Trade's good. Huh. So I actually can't kill all of their creatures, which is a little awkward. Because Mayhem Devil can't go after the Stone Coil. Hmm... I've been playing any vintage lately. I played a couple Mana Traders matches, but I want to play more Mana Traders matches. I just don't know if I want to play them on stream or not. Because I think less people are interested in vintage. And also Justin's kind of got that going. What about small changes like down to claim in the main? Uh I might I'm probably gonna go back to four after this league, because I, I really like claim. Okay, so what are we doing here? I can go Mayhem Devil, Claim a Serpent, Attack with Serpent, Sack Serpent, Ping the Ginger Brood. But I don't have enough mana to gain life off of the food. And they will have one, two, three, four. So it's going to be a five, five, which puts me to two. I mean, I don't really have anything else that I can do, right? I play Hogak and Vintage. Yeah, it's my only line. I feel like we might actually lose this game somehow. So claim this. Attack with the Stone Coil, because it's a free attack. I'll probably block, but whatever, I'll just sack it. It's being the same thing. Chose not to block into my free point. Alright, ping this. And I don't think I'm going to use the treasure to play an oven, so I'll just pass. Don't claim and sack food, is that save you more life? Don't claim and sack food. Yeah, but then they have an extra stone coil, right? If I do it that way. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't kill me, because I can kill the ginger brute. So what you're saying is just go devil plus sack food, and then I can kill the ginger brute, go to 10. Maybe that's better? Yeah, maybe that is better, actually. I might be right about that. I think I'm going to sack the blood here. Draw a card. That's a brick. So we go to two. It's also kind of a brick. Uh, well, I can't block the stone coil anyways, so I guess we'll just go attack for three and hold up some food. Question is, do I pick up Gigantha or do I just hold up two food? That is the question. Um, hmm. So what do I lose to if I pick up Gigantha? I lose to another Machikos if I don't if I don't go to eight. Because if they if I if I sack two food and they draw Machikos, then it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I would go to one. Scissors two. Yeah. But like, is my clock fast enough to the point where I can not pick up the Gigantha? Might be. Because, like, I kind of need the Gigantha to block them, but Chico's next turn, right? It's really tough. Gingerbread? No, if they draw Gingerbread, I can just kill it with the, the one food I have up. I think I have to pick up Gigantha here. Because I need to be able to block them, but Chico's next turn. Because I don't want to block with Mayhem Devil. And also, this is going to blank my Devil, so my clock is going to be even slower. I can't attack the Devil past this. Yeah. Right, exactly. I get Sack Synthesizer, <clears throat> which I assume they're going to do. Ooh, I get a trigger. Uh, I think there's no point in pinging this, right? Yeah. 
But they hit. They hit Michiko's. I believe that kills me. Well, you know, could have played around that if I held up the two food, but... I can't believe I lost this deck. This matchup should be so fucking easy, but... I mean, that doesn't help. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's insane. Keep. Another buy. And you just remember that it's a league and it doesn't matter. I don't know. It's just annoying. Hmm. But Harvester. If I Harvester, they go land, counter, attack. They can't flip this this turn. I think I'm just going to play Harvester. I don't know if I'm if saving the claim is good. I'm trying to get a little bit more value out of the claim, like after I play the Devil, but maybe that's just not going to happen. How much psychic damage was dealt? Enough. Yeah, Pioneer is awesome. I love Pioneer. Wait, they're offering the trade? Sheesh. Well, that works out for me. All right, now I'm definitely stealing this. Now I'm not messing around. I have four cards left. I get two food off of this, which is kind of pog. Probably sack one this turn. Or no, I'll sack the blood this turn. Is there a sopper guide somewhere for sack? Yeah, it's on my Twitter. It's actually free, too. Oh, I fucked up. I should have done this in case I hit push. Alright, also could have main phased that. Maybe got a little punished. So let's go land... Devil... Cat... And then I think I just pass with this and see what they do. I don't have to act quite yet. Stack some food to get more things dead. Yeah, maybe. I, I, could, I could potentially do that. I want to see what they add, what they do first. Okay, so that maybe makes things a little more interesting. Huh. I mean, I could also just wait and just try to double devil the next turn. You know? Like, just let this happen. Uh... Block Adeline, Sack Cat, kill the human token, or block Lieutenant. Yeah, this is fine. I'm just gonna let this go. Yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna double double next turn. I just kill all their shit. Maybe this is worse if they have another Lieutenant? Okay, that's fine, I think. I think I'm okay with that. So they chose Lieutenant with Bodyguard. Okay. You may go to combat. They also gave me the token for free, which is kind of nice. So we do this, sack this, kill the token. Yeah. Kill the token. That happens. And then we just take six. Go to three. Yeah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Shoot the bodyguard. I can just do that this turn, right? Beep. Beep. <laughs> so... Sack this. I will kill that. And then we'll go sack this. Do that. Sack this. They have conceded from the game. Shocker. <laughs> See ya. All right, claim in, ob out. I don't know if I like Thoughtseize in this matchup. Yeah, I'm just good with that. <clears throat> Cat up and go Burt. Yeah, I mean, Mayhem Devil is just so unbelievably fucked up in these matchups. It's just far and away your best card. Yeah, hold priority. The fancy hold priority. Double 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 draw versus white is about close you can get to. Yeah, exactly. It's so hard for them to beat the first one. Then. I mean, if I didn't draw the second one, I might have been in a tough spot, but... It did see play in standard. What are you talking about? 
It was all over Standard. Well, also, the problem with Cat Oven and Standard at that time was, like, Oko was just everywhere. Oh, non-Standard formats. Okay, I see what you're saying. I mean, it's really good in Pioneer. It's exceptional in Pioneer. Uh, this hand's awkward as hell, but I think I'm still going to keep it. I just didn't read. Streamer didn't read the comment. Classic streamer. Okay, wait. Pioneer is a standard format. It's like standard 2.0. I'm going to play around Brave the Elements. Question is, what do I push? I think I pushed this one, right? I kind of want to play around Brave the Elements. Also, it's way worse to push this if they have another one. I don't know how many of these they play, but... And before Specialists. Yeah, I guess I get punished by Specialist. They have one card in hand. Okay, so I can go Witness, Block, Sack to Dispute this turn. And then next turn, Devil with a Treasure up. I think I like that. Portable Hole! Alright, guess I'll sack it. Do take quite a bit of damage this turn. It's not lethal, right? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Go to 3. Alright, met 3. Oh, and they flipped this. Jesus Christ. Alright, might actually lose this game. Now I draw the push. Uh, okay... So I can go Mayhem Devil, Land, Pass, a Stand Up Gideon, Stand Up Beetle Ball. I go Sack Treasure, Ping Lieutenant, push the Beetle Ball, block the Gideon, or push the Hopeful, block the Gideon, take two, go to one, and they lose Lieutenant plus Hopeful. Just watch one of my friends, Hardcast Number Cool, playing Caliber to Blast against No Wind Con Control. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I think I just played Devil. Sack this. Yeah, it's got to be Devil here. So, play Devil. Play Hive. And then pass. And then they're going to go Stand Up Gideon, Stand Up Beetle Ball. I'm going to go Sack this, Push this, Ping this, Block Gideon, go to 1. Embrickle as Garfield intended. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should have mulliganed this hand. I thought it was going to be fine, but I maybe should have mulliganed. Yeah, we're also in the draw. I thought it was fine, but... Turns out it was not fine. Uh, yeah, I'm dead. It's fine. We'll, we'll get him in game three. I'm not worried about it. We'll just get him in game three. Get easy, noob. Thank you for stopping by. Surely we can't lose to Bottle White. Giganta. Keep. Sand does not have removal, but... So the question is, if they have portable hole, what would I rather have than portable hole? Probably the... Oven, because the witness blocks. So I think the oven. It's kind of close, but... Sure. Interesting. Uh... I don't really care about this card, though. kind of think I'd rather just save my claim for a better target... Just go, like, block sack. Although I have a good play next turn anyway, so I'm probably not going to block sack here. Didn't we already lose to Bottle White? No, I beat, I beat Black White Demons. Thalia, so now I can't play Fable. Can claim the Thalia, though. Hmm. I'm going to go claim Thalia. Attack for three. And then sack the Thalia. Play Ridge, pass. And then if they have Adeline, I can go eat in the live, sack this, kill Adeline. Clear the first board art is weird. It's the uh, the Japanese, whatever you call it. Um, what do you call that thing? I'm having, I'm drawing a blank. The fancy version, I don't know. Yeah, Mystical Archive. That's what it is. The Japanese Mystical Archive. Okay. So now we can go... What does this card do again? Two counters from a creature control just from among 
creatures you control destroy target artifact or enchantment. And the training says greater power. So I think I just kill this thing, right? Sack witness, kill this thing. Yeah, let's do that. A deadly dispute, huh? Uh, okay, so we can go dispute, sack, food. Cat's pretty good. It's probably better to play cat than to play harvester here. Actually, no, it's probably not. Yeah, let's just play harvester. Because the harvester can kill something next turn, maybe. Yeah, let's do it this way. Then we can go fable cat next turn. Miss the free attack. Uh, well, Eden Alive's a sorcery. They could block, right? We have another Luminarch Aspirant. Okay. If they attack, I'm definitely gonna block. I guess they put a... Wait, they didn't put a counter on this? Okay. I guess I'll take the trade. Easiest trade of my life. Another Fable, huh? So I guess now they can blow up the oven? I guess they can also blow up Fable if they want, but... Proceed. You can also flip Githian. They're doing none of that. Because now they can't flip Githian because I can just trade for it. Actually, don't have any good attacks now, right? I feel like they weren't supposed to cast that. I think they were supposed to just go to attacks. Because they can activate this or activate this. What the fuck are they doing? I don't understand why they're doing this. I'm just going to trade. They could have Brave. Well, if they had Brave, they would just attack with everything, flip the Kithian, right? They would just go Brave. Yeah, they would just attack with everything if they had Brave. Do they think that this triggers Gideon? Maybe they think that that triggers Gideon. It doesn't. Trades? Take it. Nope, I want to turn off auto yields. They have another hopeful initiate. Alright, do I want to loot the Fable away now? Uh, Yeah, I think they definitely thought that they were going to be able to flip Githian. Well, no, because they just traded away anyways, right? Yeah, I don't know if I want this extra Fable. Uh, I mean, I probably have enough mana where I can just wait. It's probably fine to wait. Okay. Uh, I might just want to discard both? I mean, I could just play both, I guess. Doesn't deal with the Adeline, though. But I guess I kind of have the Adeline covered, because I can just fucking... I just block it. I have zero cards. I have Chef at Dunes, though. Maybe I discard the Harvester and try to find Fatal Push? It's kind of nice to have the body, though. I think I'm just not going to use it. I think I'm going to do it this way. Make a token, play Harvester. Yeah, I like this. This is good. Let's get a good board going. <clears throat> Combat step. Harvester can kill Adeline. Not if they put a counter on it with the Aspirant. Because then it'll have five toughness. Which I think that's what they're going to do this turn. I think they're going to put a counter on the Adeline. They're putting a counter on the Aspirant. Okay. <laughs> they love just shoving. They love it! They just love it. Okay, well, I'll get back the cat. Trigger. Uh, so this is the biggest thing. Then I can eat, eat, four, five, six, seven, eight. Alright, I'm cool with that. Take a little bit of damage, but now that they didn't pump up the Adeline, now I can just, yeah. Right. Mm, I guess they can respond and kill a blood token with the Hopeful Initiate, but I have a feeling they're just going to kill a Fable, right? I don't know. Like, they can use the Hopeful Initiate, but yeah, they can destroy a blood token. Alright, so let's resolve this one first. Discard the land. Drew a cat, which is kind of medium. This card's, like, surprisingly annoying. <laughs> See what they do. 
Well, the other thing I could do is just not sack the Blood Tithe Harvester and just, like, loot the cat away, trying to find a Fatal Bush or something. If I copy a Fable, does it make a copy of the front? No, it copies the back. Yeah, I think I'm just down to loot with the Blood Token. Because if I find Claim or Push, like, the game's almost just over on the spot. And, like, if I sack the Harvester, they're just going to kill a Blood Token. I'm not going to be able to kill the Adeline, and I'm going to be down a Harvester, which is also a lot worse when I have the Reflection. Because I really want to keep the Harvester with the Reflection, you know? Right, but that's also a reason I don't want to sack the Harvester, you know? This is another reason I want to keep the Harvester in play. And this is also another reason. Okay, second Oven is actually not bad either. It's just more life gain. So I think I'll just play that and pass. I guess they're probably going to kill the Reflection EOT, which I think might be fine. We could pick up Giganta too, which I guess we will. It's kind of free. Go. Rose Seed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have two Fables, you can just make, like, infinite copies of them. Well, as much mana as you have, I should say. <clears throat> Not actual infinite, but close enough. They are blowing up the Fable. I will sacrifice to the oven. You may proceed. And now I have two cats, too. Just more blockers. They say... what they draw? What did they draw? They drew a Brutal Cathar. It's pretty good for them. Okay. Mm -mm. I still could lose this game. I mean, I'm not really behind right now, because I have the cats to blank most of their attacks, but... Oh, please attack with this. I think this is a bad attack. Because now I can just double block the, uh, the Aspirin. I guess they could have Wraith the Elements, but... Yeah, so now if I want to, I can just trade for this. Chump this. I guess I go to two. But I do get this off the battlefield. I guess I go to three, because I can, I can use the cat one more time. And I'm getting this next turn. I think that's fine. Because I really want to kill this Aspirant. I'm basically trading the Shaman for the Aspirant. Yeah, Mayhem Devil 2. Alright, damage. You go to 2. Gonna leave the cats in the graveyard. Okay, not terrible. So, now... Hmm... I could go Harvester, Sack the Blood, because I don't think this Gigantha's actually good. Because I really want to find Fatal Push. I'm surprised you didn't kill Asper at the Harvester when they brutaled it. Uh, well, it's only Sorcery Speed. You can't do that. You can't do that at Instant Speed. Harvester is only Sorcery Speed. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to leave Gigantha. I think it's fine. I get two more looks at a push here. That's actually pretty good too yeah so now i can just go witness pass yeah this is fine <clears throat> poor jeff do you think the fable harvester version is better than the epicure version ah still undecided i do think i've liked harvester quite a bit not 100 percent on fable this is like the the one match where fable has actually looked pretty good and also it's like the matchup where we've drawn it a lot the other matchups we just really haven't drawn it that much but we'll play it again. I'm gonna definitely gonna do the league with this. Cause I wanna get I wanna get a better feel for it. Maybe the correct answer is just play a split, you know? Play like two fable, two ob, and then four harvester or something like that. That might be the best answer. And then maybe like a third fable and a third ob in the sideboard or something, you know? Okay. Now we'll get back a cauldron familiar. I like Fable because it just smooths out somebody draws plus the treasure and copying devil are so relevant. Yeah, it definitely has its moments for sure. I think both three drops are not that great against mono green because they're just, I mean, no matter what three drop you put in that spot after Mayhem Devil, it's just like those cards are just going to be too slow against mono green. But three Fable, two Ob. I think, I, I don't know if I like five three drops other than devil. Like devil's, you know, obviously a, 
non-negotiable four of. But after Devil, I think I only want to play four more three drops. So I think two and two is probably a good place to be. I'm playing three and one right now, but I think two and two is like a pretty good split. I mean, if you wanted a fifth one, three and two is probably fine too, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, poor Jeff. I was going to say we can get Jeff back with Takanuma, but it's already in play. Rip Jeff. So I guess they're thinking about whether they want to use this on Fable. This is the first time I've ever seen this card look remotely playable. <laughs> it's like actually pretty good this game. Or Fable main three op side. I think that's what a lot of people are on to. Right now we have three Fable, one op main, and then two more ops in the sideboard. Because I think you probably want like at least three of each somewhere in the 75, right? Maybe maybe four Fable, three op in the 75 or something like that. So you can trick me to Take it back, cat. Get back, cat. So they have two three fours. So we can trade here. Chump these two. Get back harvester, go to two. Yeah, this is perfect, right? It's like actually nuts. Um, I guess I'll just sack the cat. There was an argument to sack the witness before, uh, before damage, or before blocks for that matter, because I could maybe have hit a fatal push for the Adeline, but then I don't get to block with the witness, which is kind of awkward. Two lands is kind of rough. Uh, untap. Uh, well, so I guess I'm going to kill Adeline, right? <clears throat> I got to kill Adeline. I mean, they don't have Brave. They would have cast it last turn, right? Like, I was just dead to Brave. They just, they just, after I get the cats back, Brave Pearl Black, I was dead. So they obviously don't have Brave. Okay. Now I will loot with Blood Token. Drew a Witness. Okay, so I think I'm supposed to sack the Witness now? Because that still gives me two blockers with the cat, right? I just go block, block. Yeah. And I could also hit a uh, Claim the Firstborn. That's why I want to do this main phase, I think. Good god. <laughs> Mod check spells? Any spells? Uh, guess I have an extra food. Go, I guess. <laughs> this is nuts. What's that, like, five lands and a cat? Top six cards? I died Immutable Vault? No, I don't. I can sack a food. How do I die Immutable Vault? I have three cats to block with. I'm not even close to dead to Immutable Vault. I have an Arsky this weekend, Death Running Sack, just unsure on the 75 and some of the cyber planning. They have Containment Priest, huh? Uh, fuck me, I guess. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, I guess I lose to that, right? I can go block, block. No, I go block, block, sack, gain three. Can I do one more cat loop? Five, block, block, tick four. So I have two options here. I can go through a cat loop, or I can just go block, block, sack to the oven and then crack the food. I think that's worse though, right? They're at six. Yeah, it's better to go through the cat loop, I think. So go through the cat loop. Go to five, block, block, go to one. They lose to den, or they lose to claim, right? Yeah, they're dead to claim. Any claims? Any claims? Oh my god, that's so fucking close. Because I can go play cat, put them to four, and then hive, put them to one. Do we have lethal last turn with bring back cat, untap, kill Adeline with harvester, animate den, attack for five? Maybe. Yeah, I, can I know I can sack the blood, I'm just trying to think. Because if I sack the blood, then claim's not lethal, right? It's possible I had lethal last turn, I just maybe I didn't do the math. 
Yeah, maybe I punted lethal. I didn't realize how low they were. Yeah, that might have been. That one's probably on me. That one is probably on me.